Now, you are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight, we're going to be talking about passive aggression. I think this is a very interesting subject matter because a lot of us are dealing it in our relationships, our family, our work relationships, pretty much anywhere. But oftentimes, we end up short. We don't actually know exactly what to do. We don't know how to handle it. It doesn't come second nature to us. And it kind of ruins our relationship. Some of us can feel well, lost, maybe angry about it, but we really don't know what to do. So when you know somebody that happens to be an expert on something, and I know several experts out there, when you know someone that's an expert in dealing with passive aggression, that's the person I want to talk to tonight on the show. So joining me this evening is Tim Murphy. Tim is a U.S. congressman, a psychologist, Ph.D. in the hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's a nationally recognized leader on mental health issues, and he relies on his four decades as a psychologist to advocate for reforms in the U.S. health care system. So I felt that obviously Tim will be the right person to talk to. Tim, thank you so much for joining me here live on Live Your True Life Perspectives. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. It's great to be with you. Thanks so much for having me on to talk about this important topic. Hey, I'm just glad to have you on because I always look to the expert to talk about this. And this is a subject matter that a lot of us are constantly dealing with on a daily basis. So the title of your book is Overcoming Passive Aggression. Let's see, uh, How to Stop Hidden Anger from Spoiling Your Relationships, Career, and Happiness. So what what started the, the need to write this book? Well, uh, I had written a previous book called The Angry Child uh, to deal with children, adolescents, and quite frankly, the, how anger, childhood anger goes into adulthood. But what I also found in this, and perhaps a lot of it because of folks that I work with um, are, are so involved with um, anger, that they end up um, using techniques of anger that uh, can be hidden. And that is, you know, it always makes the evening news when someone, you know, smashes someone's car or punches them or shootings. All that's that big aggressive behavior. But what comes out when um, with hidden anger uh, is that it's the sneaky things. It's holding back. It's covert action. It's um, it's not doing all you could. It's um, um, you know, the, the, the false compliments, it's gossiping behind someone's back. It's all those passive things you do that does not directly deal with someone. And quite frankly, it is kind of the theme of our time on social media. There's a lot of direct things that take place, you know, attacks, insults, obnoxious statements. But don't you know, it's not like someone saying, my name is John Doe and I disagree with you and here's what it is. They always use phony names. Um, they will be snarky and sarcastic, uh, oftentimes deriding people, but it's not the direct kind of communication that really can work towards a solution. Our, our whole society seems to be going that way. And I know my day job in Congress, well, quite frankly, there's a lot of this passive aggression there. And I think in any workplace, people see it more and more in their workplace, in their families, in their marriages or or past marriages, and it's something that I see is so pervasive in society. I had to write a book on it because I didn't see a guide that could really help us out of this. You know, I deal, uh, well, often with folks that tend to use this weapon. Uh, and when you're dealing with these kind of folks, you know, whether it's online, and I know exactly what you're talking about. I've had some comments made online about me and my work, and, yeah, the names are never real, and the comments are pretty mean and it's easy to be able to do that um under the guise of not really showing who you are uh and you know and i can understand where that comes from but one of the biggest insults i think is when you're dealing with that socially uh i live in a i live in a building that several people live in and there's a couple of people that are just constantly passive aggressive and where does that really come from is this that internal anger or where where is that festering from well, it's, a lot of it comes from just the way people learned 
to face conflict, not handle it, but face it. Uh, so from childhood, that uh, whether anger for them was the voice of pain or a voice of indulgence or, 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 or the voice of um, uh, just attack, that they learned to use anger to respond to uh, problems. But what happened is they didn't learn a more effective technique. I mean, let's face it, actually, communication takes work. To be able to sit down face to face with someone with whom you're having a conflict and say, hey, we need to talk. I, neither one of us is benefiting from this problem. Let's face it. Let's come up with a solution. Let's, let me tell me your idea is mine. Let's work this out. That takes time. But anger and rage and the issues of the, just the festering wounds take a lot more time, a lot more energy, and can be emotionally and, quite frankly, physically and medically damaging. But for some people, they just didn't learn another way. And so they think that, hey, I'm going to get someone back. And, and then we, we reward it. I mean, how many times do we hear stories from people that say, you know, I was in the grocery store and I'm standing in line waiting for something. And the person in front of me took out a checkbook and it was, oh, this I took forever and ever. So I showed her, I took one of her items and I you know, took it out of her basket. And she will wonder where was her ketchup when she gets <laughs> home. You know, okay, well, big deal. What did you prove there? Or, you know, the things that people do in parking lots. I parked too close to him so he couldn't get out of his car. Um, whatever it is. And then we say, yeah, you go, you go, you get him, you get him. Big deal. But we use this as a way of somehow patting ourselves on the back that look what I did. I hurt somebody. It doesn't work. It, it, it just makes things worse. Uh, and so whether you do in the workplace to stick it to another employee or stick it to the boss or stick it to your employees or in your marriage, or if you're doing this in your marriage a lot, you're soon to be ex marriage. Uh, it is, is just something that's kind of, we tell ourselves it's self rewarding because we think that venting is actually healthy. I mean, how many times did you hear people say, you know, why don't you just let it out? Go ahead and express your emotions, punch this pillow, throw something, smash this glass and you'll feel better. Well, you may feel better for a second if that's your self rewarding, say, uh, your way of doing things, but it sure isn't going to work and you're actually going to end up feeling worse in the long run. You know, I do find that interesting. It's just not in my nature uh, to do that. And, and that's interesting. I'm not, I haven't ever dealt with um, opposition or conflict that way. Uh, but it's interesting from the other perspective, from someone that isn't passive aggressive, I find that when I am dealing with someone that's passive aggressive, I have a tendency of kind of feeling lost. But also, I guess kind of upset because I realize that that person is acting out but acting from um, a different place. And, and I guess maybe they don't respect they don't respect me enough to just be honest or just to come to the table and us conversate. Well, there could be those parts. They could be not respecting you. They could also have no clue what to do. And they're trying to put the argument on their grounds. And the very fact that you just said you felt uncomfortable means you're playing in their court, uh, their basketball court, uh, by their rules. That uh, the rules that a functional relationship works from is be upfront, be honest, deal with the honesty, even if it hurts. Um, that takes some work, but in a passive aggressive way, you're not going to be direct. You're going to be covert. You're going to be hidden in your anger and you can do some things to undermine that other person, set them off. And then you're not on your game. Uh, and so, uh, they will have a, uh, upper hand in those arguments or whatever game they're playing. So if you're in a situation, so I just want some of our, our listeners to hear this. If you're in a situation with someone that is passive aggressive, I mean, do you just have to get the gumption up and just say, hey, you know, meet up with them and say, hey, what's your problem? You know, we, we need to get well, this all put out here. Let, let's all be clear about who's in the, what situation and what, what do you think and what I think, because let's just put it out there on the table. That's one possible way, actually. And that's, you know, in this book that, uh, which is a couple hundred pages long, goes into a lot of details in overcoming passive aggression in the sense of you got to understand what problem you're facing and then get some sense of how to deal with it. Not all are addressed the same way. In some cases, quite frankly, if you're dealing with a passive aggressive person where the stakes at that moment don't matter, sometimes it's not necessary to engage. Just step out of the way. So it's a person you may see in public. <clears throat> in a store, in an office, uh, you know, standing in line somewhere and engaging that person after they've just done that. Sometimes a simple thing is to say, hey, you know, I was in line first uh, or um, that's my order you just took or whatever that might be. Uh, just a simple statement. If they come back with a, with up, ramps up a little more aggression, quite frankly, in today's society, I'm a little worried about because people could be unpredictable. But in the workplace, it is important to sit down and say, hey, look, we've got to solve this problem. We had this project we were assigned at work. 
Um, you didn't show up to the meetings. When you did show up for things, you didn't have your work done. Um, we well, need to talk about this. Or sometimes you have a group think that's undermining someone else in the office, and they'll start harming people and saying, hey, you know, Charlie, let's just box him out. Let's give him some phony information from the boss. And won't it be funny? And someone's got to speak up in those situations and says, no, I, I don't want to work in a place like that. Stop it. Let's get back to our focus, back to our work, get things done. I like I like that direction because I think oftentimes people do engage and it's kind of like they get dirty. It's like you can't really, you know, you can't really roll around in the dirt and not get dirty. And sometimes we play on their uh, on their level, you know, because I guess maybe it doesn't come second nature. We don't really understand what we're getting into. And so people have a tendency of kind of, I don't know, stepping back a little bit. So when we return, we're going to go to break here in just a second. And when we return, we're talking more about dealing with passive aggression uh, more about how to deal with it, you know, in your school, in your home, in your work, because when it's really close to you, it's 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 tough, and it and it gets on your mind, and it, and it sticks there, and it's something that you need to deal with. And we'll also talk about how to deal with our own passive aggressive tendencies and how to see that. Stay tuned because live your true life perspectives with your host, me Ashley Burgess. Be back this time. Be back this time in two shakes. and jump in the deep end on Perspectives. Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Joining me this evening on Live Your True Life Perspectives is Tim Murphy, Ph.D. and U.S. Congressman Psychologist. He's actually helping us figure out and navigate how to deal with passive aggression in our life, in our home life, as well as in our work. Tim, it's been great having you on. So how how do we deal with this uh, in, in our work life, because this is something that we deal with all the time, at least Monday through Friday, you know, maybe 50, 60 hours a week. How do you advise dealing with this? Well, let's break this down in a few steps here, because whether you're working in a factory, in a medical department, a hospital, in a lab, um, anywhere, you're going to see these behaviors creep up. Now, luckily, in most cases, people, you can write it off as just a bad day. Someone's grumpy, someone is out of sorts, and you can pick that up. And if someone's not getting their work done or other things, sometimes just calling attention to it, a simple phrase like, are you okay? Something's different today. Is there anything you need? That can sometimes just shine a little light on the person, help them understand that you care about them. And maybe sometimes even hear something that could be, yeah, you know, my daughter's really sick or I got terrible financial problems or things. Or sometimes people say, yeah, I'll be okay. Just a bad day. Leave me alone. <clears throat> I say, okay, well, that's, that's fine. Then redirect them says, here, let's, let's get back on target, back on task. The concern comes when you're dealing with someone who handles this chronically. Quite frankly, just a pain in the neck to work with because they shun responsibility. They set things up so that the errors are blamed on you. They make a toxic environment in this. And um, we have to be able to discern, is it them or is it me who does this? This could be the, the irascible boss, the disagreeable student, the backstabbing co-worker. The, and these things really make people want to leave that office space. So here's a few things. Identify um, who it is. I mean, uh, is it, are you kind of person who feels bothered when requests are made of you? Do, do you keep your feelings to yourself? Are you um, someone who gets upset by criticism? Uh, do you like to appear successful in everything? Um, how do you handle frustration and anger? And the reason I'm saying these things, in which we have a further checklist in the book, is just get a sense of your own self and how you handle conflict. Because sometimes people are responding to your own inability to communicate directly or your own grumpiness and style. And uh, sometimes it helps to just keep your own personal journal. What gets you angry? What are the stressors on the job? Uh, and even if you see that it is one person and what they do, just writing down what happens sometimes helps. So here's something that I knew, someone who, um, a woman who didn't like her boss very much. And so what she did to her boss was, well, just got it was, had to book seats on an airplane, got her boss the seats that, well, were way in the back by the restroom, seats that didn't go down the middle, just gave annoying seats. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the only seats left or double book appointments, or made it so that, uh, so that her boss couldn't get from one point to another um, uh, in time. Uh, now, that eventually became a situation when, when the boss uh, came to the employee and said, look, this is, this is not working out. Let's talk factually through this. And after two or three attempts to get things right, 
it appeared that either this employee wasn't going to get it or was doing this with, on purpose. And eventually that boss had to say to her employee, look, we're going to transfer you, get you out of the job. And then the employee backs up, uh, backs it up by telling other employees, isn't the boss terrible? Look at our boss. She's terrible. She's awful. She's mean. She's picking on me. That's why it's important when you're in a situation like this, write it down, document. If it continues on, document it because if that person deals with others in a passive aggressive behavior, they also have the potential to be very aggressive in that. So be careful. Another thing is you sometimes are dealing with people who are just are burned out. Uh, they feel a, a compassion fatigue. You see this a lot in hospitals where people are so used to pouring their heart out, helping people out who are sick, who are struggling, that they themselves are not taking care of themselves. It's that candle that is burnt out. And uh, it is important when you see that for other people, sometimes it's just good to say, hey, you need a break. Go take, you need a vacation. You need to take time off because you're getting grumpy here. You're missing things. Uh, and that's a problem. Um, and the the we, though, is just kind of assess yourself. Now, some of the anger types you may see at work or school are betraying someone with secrets, having other people take credit for your work, uh, breaking confidences, telling gossip, um, uh, maybe plays up a certain person with authority and treats subordinates poorly, maybe sabotages other works. through. Um, and so the way you handle those kind of things is approach people with kindness. Don't gossip. Uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Make sure you're documenting your own successes. And we also have a person, that first person we call the backstabber. The next person we call the avenger. And this is when they lash out. They don't really have options. They don't know how to solve problems. So they'll obstruct your goals. They'll sabotage your work. They'll pull the wool over other people's eyes. Um, they'll criticize you behind your back. And those are ones where um, being respectful of others is helpful. Don't let other people blame you for what's not your fault. Speak up for yourself, but don't do revenge yourself. And one other uh, kind of person in the workplace I want to mention is, well, for lack of a better term, we call him the Eeyore. Now, remember the Winnie the Pooh story about Eeyore? <laughs> yes. Always playing, oh, I'm terrible, nothing's going to work. So this is the kind of person who uses passive-aggressive behavior by calling insults themselves. I know if one, uh, one person was talking to a coworker and says, you know, you keep making the same mistake over again. Um, and, and this is causing a problem for us. And this person says, I know you're mad at me because I'm fat. Oh, sure, call me despicable. I know you all hate me. He said, whoa, I didn't say that at all. I just said you kept making the same mistake. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. So it is this ear mentality that I'm the victim. Nothing's going to work. Uh, the glass is half empty. I feel sorry for myself. And the way to handle that is be direct. Be focused. Uh, ignore those victim kind of statements about, and correct them. I didn't say that at all. And, you know, you're a good worker. So you make it very clear. We, but don't accept their redirection into the insult. Put it back into facts. Um, be careful of getting into emotional statements with that. Um, and sometimes just hand them back to work and say, this isn't done. you got to do it again. Because sometimes this person who wants you to feel sorry for them will intentionally set up a failure, blame you for that, or set up their own failure so you come back and chew them out and say, see, nobody likes me. You don't appreciate my work. And that's the way you undermine that you kind of person. There, I mean, there's several types of persons there in the workplace, but those are some of them and how you can respond back. How do you deal with, so let's, let's combine, let's add a combination here. Let's uh, water size this issue. How do you deal with someone who happens to be a full-on narcissist who has a repertoire of using passive aggression quite well and who uses other people uh, to basically use as a dictatorship so they kind of hide behind other people and so it's hard to ever really get to that person but they use other pawns to basically initiate their uh, you know their ruling well yeah these are the people who want to be seen as a superstar um, hey it's it's me I'm the one uh, focus on me they ingratiate themselves real successfully in form but then they form a lot of these triangles at work or school and other relationships to, because um, they got to manipulate people that way who are just looking to them as the solution. Well, um, what you want to do here is you can feel positive about them uh, and and in their their accomplishments, but uh, don't get duped into the idea that uh, and don't buy into their narcissism. Um, these folks may reject mentoring. So if you're trying to help them, they may come back and say, you can't help me. And nobody knows this as good as me. I'm the one. You're just trying to tell me I'm dumb and I'm going to accept that. And then they'll get other people to triangulate against you. 
on, on those triangulations where they're setting someone else up instead of them to attack you instead of them, it is very important with a narcissistic person. Keep the facts. Always talk the facts. I didn't say that. Yes, I said this. It's kind of good to sometimes ignore their know-it-all nature. Yeah, okay, all right. I thank you for saying that, but now we have to go back and get the facts and the research on this. Stick with things in writing. And I wouldn't even argue over sometimes over who is right, especially if that narcissist just gets involved in bullying, argues just for the sport of it or just for the sake of intention, attention there. Um, you don't want to buy into they think they're always right. Document things carefully. Get in. Uh, sometimes you have to talk to human resources at the office. Uh, sometimes you have to deal with the collateral damage of, uh, to stop bullying or, or even cyber stalking that may take, may take place with this kind of person. But don't get involved in that common kind of competition where it's me versus you. Uh, focus on your work. Um, watch out for the engagement in the um, you versus me argument instead. I've been looking at the uh, the quiz. Yeah, what's your performance style uh, in your book? It's very interesting. I, I took the quiz uh, a few days ago in Chapter 8, Seething Through the Work and School Day, and I find it very interesting. It, I got a score of 25 to 33. Your style is fairly direct and open to self-expression, adaptivity, and new challenges. So I feel yeah, good I about that. that. I can see that, Ashley. I can see that, yeah. And you, yes, that's your style. <laughs> I was like, man, I won. <laughs> you know, it's, well, it's true, though. It's crazy because a lot of people, I, I kind of looked through that list and saw some stuff that I deal with on a daily basis with folks, you know. But let me say, though, that if you have a real direct style, then you're dealing with someone who has a very indirect style. They may see your style as very threatening mm. and want to undermine that and, and block you from that. So those are the kind of things that happen. That's interesting. Huh? Interesting. That's interesting. I need to I need to think about that. Let's talk about more of that when we return from the break. Uh, if you check out the website, AshleyBurgess.com, Ashley, B-E-R-G-E-S.com. And for anybody that wants to replay this show and listen to it again after broadcast, go to iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play, and live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. Be back this time. Be back this time in two shakes. Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. If you're just tuning in, we've been talking about passive aggression, and I know that a lot of us have to deal with this at home, at work. But you know what? One of the biggest things that we might be dealing with passive aggression, something that we wouldn't even expect, is in our relationships, even in our love relationships, somebody we're dating or seeing, we might not even expect that. And so, you know, dealing with that can make us feel a little sideswiped and not really know how to respond or how to deal with it if it doesn't come second nature to you. Joining me this evening again is Tim Murphy. He's a U.S. congressman and psychologist, and his hometown is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he's here because he wrote this amazing book called Overcoming Passive Aggression, How to Stop Hidden Anger from Spoiling Your Relationships, Career, and Happiness. And so we're returning talking about more about relationships now because we talked about the work aspect. So, Tim, you know, how do you deal with this passive aggression when you're dealing with it in a relationship that's supposed to be harmonious and loving and all that good stuff. Well, even when you are in a loving relationship, passive aggression can rear its ugly head in the tiniest ways. Uh, one of the ways is the detached person who just isn't emotionally available at times. Now, this is different from, hey, listen, I just had a bad day. Can I have some space on my own? That's okay. That is uh, a way that... Um, uh, a, a person in that relationship, whether their spouse or love, whatever, can say, okay, I'll be supportive, sure. But that time when someone says, hey, can I just have some alone time to kind of get things back together, can also be undermined by the passive aggressive person saying, okay, fine, you want to be alone? You want to ignore me? Fine. And then while well, this person is saying, I just need quiet time in the living room just to debrief uh, my own head here, the other person's banging the pots and pans, run the new, running the vacuum cleaner, making noise, run the dog through, doing some things to bug the person the person asked not to do. But when it goes beyond just that, when it is really a detached relationship, it's no longer sharing the feelings, no longer talking about the special moments, no longer saying, hey, I just want to bounce an idea off you. I mean, I'm struggling with this thought in my own head. The, the, the solid relationship that builds that emotional in, intimacy 
will openly talk about those things and try to communicate. Now, granted, women are much better at some things about communicating with men. You got different brains than we do. Uh, you're, you pay more attention to emotional data than men do. That's just a fact. And we got to accept that. But when someone intentionally withholds information, I, I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want to share this with you because I just want to annoy you and bug you and be detached. That's when it gets into a problem. It could also be um, this guy named John Gottman, who founded the Gottman Institute, the psychologist, talks about things like criticism and contempt and defensiveness and stonewalling. All can predict that um, something like over 90% of the time when someone's going to divorce, if they're all in there, it could be a certain selfishness. It could be the little nitpicking criticism. It could be withholding um, compliments are all part of what can be very, very damaging in a relationship. And then from that, you also have things like um, people who are negativistic, people who are you know, you're dealing with the financial distresses of a home and someone is um, not doing the right things to save the money to uh, be a, a little more responsible with that. Um, are all parts that, that feed into these relationships. And, and boy, they can be so toxic. They can just destroy something that was once highly romantic love and finally just chip away and chip away until it just dies. That, you know, that's interesting. You talked about the, the aggression in divorce. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of aggression in divorce. Maybe the person that didn't want to necessarily get a divorce. But what about those people that they kind of act, they're all happy about moving on, but are they really with some of the tactics that they use? When they're moving on from uh, from the marriage, um, actually, a lot of them are not happy because in a case where someone thought a divorce was going to solve their problems, if they did not take care of the thing that caused conflict with other people, it's not going to do it. I mean, it, it predicts, for example, people who are in stressed relationships and dissatisfied actually have a lot of their physical problems. I mean, literally, it can affect your health. Um, that uh, heart disease and lung disease and flu and colds and um, can worsen other uh, things you have. It really can make you sick um, if you're not taking care of it. And so what people tend to do is, well, I'm just going to blame my spouse. And they, they will create a lot of passive aggressive things which make it worse, particularly in child custody battles, being late to drop off or pick up to the child, arguing every time there is a change in schedule, not, let, not working this out with the other parent being delayed in the um, in the child um, support payment or the alimony payment, dragging the other person back into court over and over again. You know, someone will spend tens of thousands of dollars battling an ex in court that they would have been much better off and much happier and live much longer if they just would have said, you know what, it's over, that's it, I just have to accept this. It is tough to do that. It's extremely tough to say goodbye in a relationship and say, okay, just – all those years I tried to put in to make something work, it just wasn't there. And it can be heartbreaking to do that. But, you know, you're much better off focusing on talking about how to go in that direction than to think that by being passive aggressive and ornery and difficult with your ex or soon to be ex, it's going to make a difference. You know what? It just doesn't. I don't, I don't know cases where that has worked. It just made people more miserable, spend more money, and then they blame each other for having to spend more money. Um, it is just uh, it's not the way to go. How much? I mean, to me, it sounds like passive aggression. To me, is just a full-on manipulation. Uh, it is, yes, it can be. So, yeah, when it's not just venting your own unresolved anger, it is a mechanism to manipulate the other person's emotions, or behaviors, or thoughts. And uh, the thoughts may be directed towards "you're bad, I'm good," or "I'm bad and pity me." Uh, it could be uh, their emotions, like just make you miserable and depressed and angry and dysfunctional, and then manipulate their behaviors to make that other person make a mistake, make them do something bad, make them do something they regret, uh, get them fired from work, uh, get them transferred from a project. Uh, all those turn the kids against them. Yeah, it's manipulation. Yeah, that's what it feels like. And it, do you think sometimes some people just do it? Um, just because it's habit, maybe they don't know, necessarily know what they're doing, or do you think across the board people know exactly what they're up to to some degree? I think sometimes they know what they're doing because it's intentional manipulation and, and intentional attacks. But I oftentimes say to such persons, you know what you need? You need a friend to tell you what a jerk you are. You need someone who can you would trust enough, be open and honest enough to tell you that no matter what you think you're doing, you are not helping yourself or your life. It's sort of like the I tell people like it's the difference between how do they say it? The difference between what you want on your resume for life and what you want on your eulogy for your death. 
And your resume may say, hey, this person did a lot of things. They were, were successful in their job. They pushed other people out of the way. They, were, they um, handled these things. They, um, they you know, got rid of this marriage or whatever. But in your eulogy, if your eulogy says, boy, this person was a real jerk, <laughs> annoyed other people around, couldn't handle conflict, and we're not going to the funeral anyways. I don't know if that's how we want to be remembered, but they, that, that's some of the ways that people handle this. And um, and it's good to make you step, step back and think, am I doing this in my life? Where am I doing this? Well, actually, the answer is we all do it. But the, but the real question is, how can I change that in my own heart so I'm acting better and not doing this to other people? That's interesting. Um, yeah, that, that's that to me, too. Do you think that you can actually talk with somebody and have a communication with them? Um, I mean, I don't. I, I think to some degree you can be honest with them, and maybe they'll listen. But aren't there? There's some people that no matter what you say, no matter how you say it, they're just going to use that against you. Um, no I think. That, what. I, yeah, I think if you're dealing with the narcissistic person, or the person who's bound and determined to ruin your life, uh, get back at you, seek revenge. Um, it may be very, very hard to get rid of them, but you never know. You know when. When there is, um, you look at things like some flowers, some trees, they, they put their seeds out in the woods and they can sit dormant for years and years and years. And after a fire, those are the first plants to bloom because something happened that finally woke them up. And it, it is similar whether you're dealing with someone and trying to confront them about their substance abuse or their drinking or the behavior and habits, just not getting through to them. But you hope that someday in their life, something's going to wake them up. That moment that wakes them up just in time to say, you know, you need to change. Uh, approaching is different. Your life will be better. You can't go from relationship to relationship, uh, from job to job, from person to person, being destructive this way. They may not listen the first time, and maybe they may not ever listen to you. Maybe someone else uh, that finally gets through to them. You hope they'll change. Some people, it may be decades, and they're just not going to change, but you hope you can get through. And I like to believe that when you're working with someone in counseling or therapy, that things can get through to them. And last but not least, you know, I wanted to ask you, Tim, what is one tip um, that you could give everybody universally kind of when they're dealing with this, how to inspire people to know that they can get over this or something that you think intrinsically kind of can empower folks if they're dealing with someone that's passive aggressive in their life? Well, I understand this, that it is hard to get someone else to change. Uh, and so, but ask yourself first, is there something that I can do to make my life better? Whether that is saying, you know, I, I'm dealing with a tough time at work. I will do other things in my life, whether it is uh, a relaxation, whether it's taking walks, whether it's going to church or praying more or reading about successful people, redirect my life, energize my life so I can handle this. Second, take your own inventory. Am I doing this myself? Write things down. Take the quizzes in our book or, or listen to our audio of the book, but, but do those things to understand it. Ask, ask yourself those things and process it forward. And then third, look at the tips of what you can do to redirect someone. Don't attack them. Don't be mean back. But you're trying to redirect them at least to some extent where you can make things work better in your life and their life. And I think there you'll see some accomplishments coming through. And Tim, where can we find your book at? Uh, you can certainly get it from anything uh, online, Overcoming Passive Aggression, How to Stop Hidden Anger from Spoiling Your Relationships, Career and Happiness, uh, published uh, uh, by DeCapo Books, but uh, find it at bookstores or online or, like I say, an audio version is available too. Thank you for coming on, Tim, and I look forward to having you back on Live Your True Life Perspectives. Love it. Have a great day, and thanks for having me on. Live Your True Life Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. Be back this time. Be back this time in two shakes. Get in here. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Look at Your Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Well, that was a great show. I really enjoyed having Tim Murphy on the show to explain and to help us more with dealing with passive aggression and dealing with folks that use that as a weapon and as a manipulation tool um, to basically make everybody around them feel like crap. You know, I I haven't ever used passive aggression as a tool. And, you know, there's been a few times where I've tried to fight the system with people that have, but I just find myself rolling around in the mud. It doesn't work. And I know many of you out there listening right now are saying, hey, I'm dealing with this every day at work or at home or in school or wherever I'm at. I think it's overwhelming. And I'm here to tell you, I agree with you. But you know what? After that and, and through my personal work and the stuff that I deal with and the counseling and the and the life coaching that I do, I found out you're right. And, and Tim was right. Sometimes you just got to call it out. You just got to call it out. You just got to put all the cards on the table. Because oftentimes I find that this passive aggression comes when it's kind of hidden in the dark. When it has the ability to hide out 
it uses that as a safe zone to be able to manipulate from that way. And it's quite painful to deal with because a lot of times, like I was saying earlier, it kind of like sideswipes you because you're not really expecting it. And the way that it happens, it's just kind of despicable. It's not the way I would deal with something. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I had a fight. And I think I've talked about this probably several years ago on the radio. But I had a... And when I mean fight, I mean, you know, like I pushed her and she pushed me and then that was it. But I had a fight with this girl. She was a brownie. We were brownies. Uh, and I don't know if you know what brownies were, but brownies were like the younger version of the Girl Scout. Yeah. So we wore brown and the Girl Scouts wear green, right? So... I remember she used to pick her nose all the time, and um, and it it, it it was gross, and and it and it grossed me out. And I would tell her, I would please, please stop picking your nose, but she would never stop picking her nose. And so one night there was a retreat, and I pulled her aside and pulled her behind this door, and I like, I like you know hit her in the arm or something like that. And I was like, you're gonna stop doing that. I haven't ever been a person that likes to play behind the scenes. I haven't ever been a person that likes to manipulate people from the secret door. It just doesn't work for me. And and I think many of you can understand that by listening to my show, but I think a lot of you can resonate with that. And it's not that we're type A personalities or crazy. It's just that we like to just say it the way it is and not mince words. You know, I think it's funny. You know, I, I have to like hold myself back a little bit, you know. Uh, in certain cases, you know, there's a couple people, and I know everybody listening to this show has probably got the same thing. There's a couple people in your life you're definitely not friends with, but you got to deal with peripherally. And half the time, haven't you ever had that dream where the next time they came up and you and they said, how do you, you just said, hey, don't ever talk to me again and go away. Can't stand you. But you don't ever do that. You know, I mean, life would probably be a better place if we did. But I know we're trying to be good people and, and, and good sports about it. But, you know, when you think about passive aggression to me, I do find that as a type of manipulation. I find that as a power tactic. I find that a way of undermining uh, other people and devaluing them. And I also find that when people use this type of manipulation on me, I want to go a little deeper into my psyche real quick because it doesn't really anger me. Okay, it doesn't really anger me. And instead, it kind of makes it where I don't know the next path to take. Like, I don't know what the next action needs to be, so I become actionless. I also find that I get resentful. Because I know that I'm not dealing with somebody on my same mental level. My same emotional IQ, my same mental prowess. And when you know that and you've tried to push that envelope in hopes that they understand and you realize that they're either playing a game with you or that's just the way they've always done everything, that's when I shut down. And you might be feeling the same way too. You might be being like, wow, Ashley, that's accurately right because a lot of times when people are doing us wrong, our inclination is to shut down. Because conflict is something we don't necessarily want to deal with. We don't want to deal with conflict at all. It's overwhelming to us. It gets on our everlasting nerve. It's not something we want to deal with. And so in that situation, instead of saying, hey, you know, you are trying to manipulate me. Um, You've been playing this game with me and I'm tired of it. Grow up. You know, let's have a conversation. Instead of having that comment and that conversation, we try to avoid it. Okay, and I don't know about you, but I know about me when I try to avoid it, sometimes it's the right thing to do because it's not worth it. But other times it just makes me kind of think about it all the time. Like I begin to overly think about the situation and I begin to second guess uh, how I feel. And then I begin to wonder, well, was I really was I the jerk? And, you know, if you remember what Tim said back in the second segment, he said, you know, as uh, you know, when you're an employee or you're dealing with a situation with an employer or something like that, you want to document these passive aggressive situations so later on you can use that. But I don't think it just stops there. I really think that when you are dealing with somebody that is passive aggressive in your personal life, your professional life, whatever, I think that documenting that down so that later on when you look back at that, you don't sit there and say, oh, maybe this is all in my head. Okay, because I think that because it is a type of manipulation, we have a tendency of just saying, well, maybe I just, maybe I'm just like got my heart on my sleeve or maybe I'm just, you know, I'm just... I'm just feeling this and, and, and I just need to kind of relax or, or maybe I've taken it out of context or, or maybe, you know, maybe I ate something bad that day and just kind of assume that's what they were saying. But 
Honestly, oftentimes we begin to question the way something happened when we're in the situation of manipulation um, because our brain works that way because we begin to re- we rethink over and over again the situation and then somebody might put their two cents in there and make you begin to question what really, really happened. And that to me means that directly passive aggression and all of its aspirations is is manipulation. And when you are dealing with narcissistic folks who are manipulative and use passive aggression as their tactic, as their weapon, this is something that you need to either avoid like the plague if you have the possibility of doing, or I think you got to just throw it out on the table. And I mean, I'm working on it right now in my own life, okay, because I don't really like to have complete conflict. And, And I do see that conflict does work a lot of times. But in the interim, I don't always want to have conflict. I don't always want to deal with issues like that. Instead, I don't want to deal with that. But sometimes in life, no matter how much we don't want to deal with something, we have to step up to the plate because I think it's more than just dealing with them. It's more than just dealing with them. It's actually doing what's right by us. And when we don't do what's right by us, we kind of feel bad. And it it, it, it brings us down and it takes us down and, and it messes with our our mental capability. And it also messes with our ability to make decisions because we start wondering, can we make the right decisions? Do we make the right decisions? Is this the right thing to do? When in reality, we shouldn't be questioning that at all. We should be actually saying, hey, I know this to be the case. I feel this manipulation. It is real, and I need to make a change. Stand up for yourself and believe in you, and the next time that somebody's using passive aggression on you, feasibly and reasonably begin to positively call them out. Stay tuned. I have a great show for you next. Check out the website, AshleyBurgess.com, and live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. Be back this time. Be back this time in three shakes.